when I was in uh, grade school, my older oldest brother and sister were in high school, junior and, and uh, senior in high school. And one, they had, uh, my sister went to uh, Franklin High School, Cleveland High School, excuse me. And she, um, she had made some good friends and so has had my brother. And one day they, uh, they requested or asked or somehow it came up that they wanted to go to a wedding. Well, there was only one problem. The wedding was in a Lutheran church. And my mother said, no, absolutely not. Well, there ensued a discussion, sometimes called an argument. <laughs> and the, it was about whether or not they could actually go into a Protestant church and, and whether they could attend this marriage of their friends. And my mother insisted, the rules were clear. No, no way could they go. So they didn't go. Sometime later, they had another discussion about, uh, about a, a youth group. They had met some, peop some young people and wanted to go to this, this uh, group for young people and where they're gonna have a dance or something. And the only problem was it was sponsored by De Molay. Now, I don't know if you know what De Molay was sponsored by the Masons. So again, the answer was a clear no. You can't go to anything sponsored by De Molay. Well, it was very much to my mother, it was very clear. The walls were built and we had to stay within those walls and you couldn't go wander outside to see other people or to mingle with other people in anything that would smack of a different religious context. I was curious about that. And one day I wandered over to that Lutheran church as it was about a mile from our home. And I wanted to see what was going, what was happening. I didn't have any real questions. I just wanted to see what was going on. And, and the, the doors of the church were open and I could look inside, kind of looked like a church to me. <laughs> I couldn't see the problem. It wasn't obvious in the, in, in the building, of course. Well, anyway, the, uh, the, the head, the walls were built and we all know about, if you're old enough, you know about those walls. When Jesus uh, was teaching, he constantly came into a conflict with the Pharisees. And the conflict was about walls and about the walls that the, that the Pharisees or the religious leaders of his time had built, the leaders of the temple. They had built these walls to maintain two things. One is whether you were Jewish and the second was whether if you were Jewish, whether you were holy enough. Those two things were their major concerns. And so they, they criticized Jesus and they, uh, for, uh, for his disciples' uncleanliness, as if it's not about germs now, because they didn't really know about germs, but it was about were they pure enough? Were they holy enough? That's what it was. And when they were eat their food, they had to be holy and pure to eat that food. But the but the the story, if you go if you go previously, the story is about Jesus in the marketplace, and he's been in the marketplace, the same place the Pharisees were had been, and he comes out of the he is in the marketplace, and he is curing people, he's helping them out. These people who are vulnerable, individuals who are sick, who are ill. He wants to help them and cure them. And the Pharisees are in the marketplace. They come out, they feel they are less holy. And uh, they have to purify themselves so that they can now continue their life as a good Jew in their holiness and they regain their holiness. Jesus didn't think that he had become unholy by healing people or by being with these people in the marketplace. And it's a, it reminded me of, of a book that I read many years ago. And it was a very popular spiritual book. And a friend, some friends of mine wrote me and said, gee, you ought to read this. And uh, at that time I was in the seminary. So I picked it up and I read it. And there was one line that, that bothered me and I remember to this day. And he said, uh, in that one line, he said, the more I go among men, the less of a man I become. 
So he was going to be a hermit. He was going to shun people, exclude himself from people because being with people made him less of a person. It was hard for me to swallow. And I, I just couldn't uh, abide by that. But anyway, this, this is a, a, something that seems to go on in our society. And Jesus is, is concerned about the purity. He is concerned about his people being holy. And he's concerned about teaching about holiness and about bringing people to God. And he says that, you know, the, to the Pharisees, you have missed the point here. The point is the Torah or the Bible that they had. The, the Bible that they, that they worked with. And he said, what you've done is you've taken this tradition of the elders, which is the oral tradition, kind of the things that they made up as they went along, and you've made that your dogma rather than the scriptures themselves, rather than the Bible itself. And, that, and he wants to bring people back to that, to that Bible. He wants to bring back people back to understanding God's presence in their lives and that that God is the one who makes them holy. That's his constant fight with the religious leaders. And, it's a, and it goes on through the Bible and through his life. And we need to kind of understand that, what that fight is about, that conflict that goes on between him and the religious leaders. I think that, you know, the people who build the walls are not us. They're the, in, our, in our religious faith, they're the religious leaders. They're typically are the ones who make the walls that bind us and control and try to control us and tell us that the direction. And sometimes people, the people of faith, have a clearer idea of what needs to be done and what should be a wall and what shouldn't than the religious leaders have because of their investment. And that's Jesus' criticism of those, of those religious leaders. He said in another place, you put burdens on the people that they cannot carry. It's too much. You build, you put too much burden on them and they can't, uh, they can't deal with it. And so, so another way of thinking about that is that Jesus is saying, it's not a person's, what a person is that makes you impure. It's not the fact that I'm white and you're brown or black. It's not the fact that I'm a man and you're a woman. That isn't what makes us impure. It's not the fact that I'm, I've got all my limbs work and you're, you're crippled or something or that you have a disease or something like that. That's not what makes us impure. He said, that's not what makes us unholy. These were all people of God. What makes us unholy or what is what we do in our relationships. When we deceive people, when we lie, when we cheat them, when we, uh, you know, we steal from them, we murder them. That's what makes us unholy. All those actions that we do, not what we are. That doesn't make us unholy or being in contact with somebody who is different than us, that doesn't make us unholy. What makes us unholy is what we do to people. That's what makes us unholy. And so he wants to, he wants to get that message across and he understands that, that message. But he also has to learn and he has to learn something about that wall of holiness. And, and I think if you, next week you're gonna hear what he does in addition. And that he meets this woman who kind of educates him about the walls. And he, she helps him break down some of the walls that he, as a good Jew, had. Yeah, I think we need to understand that Jesus was raised in a Jewish society and in, with all their biases and all their understandings that they had. And he, in his life, he goes through a process of breaking down and those uh, challenging those biases or having them challenged by other people and he understands more clearly the message of god as he goes as he goes along in his life well that's what we need to do too but unfortunately even in our day people want to build walls they want to do it even in our own faith we have a political situation, and in the political situations, our religious leaders want to build walls. The, uh, whether or not you agree with the president, he is the president. He's a good man. He's a man of, of faith, and, and he's been had this faith all his life, and, and he's practiced it. And yet, 
the religious leaders of our church, some of them, not all of them, want to, want to uh, prevent him from going to communion. And literally what that means is they want to excommunicate him. That's what excommunication is when you are forbidden to go to communion. And they want to do that for, because of his stance on, on one issue. Well, I think that, you know, um, it would be much better if these leaders of the faith sat down with him and talked with him and tried to build a relationship with him rather than trying to exercise their power to control him or dominate him or something like that, because that's what it's about. That's what the religious leaders want to do when they see that their power may be shifting a little bit. They want to control. They want to dominate. And so they, build, they want to build a wall, even in this case. And I think it, it's a, we can see that there's real, some real problems with that, what they want to do. And some of the, some of the clergy, uh, some of the bishops also see that. But it's ongoing. And it's something that, that this building of walls and this, this uh, separation that we have is something that is ongoing in our society. And we see it over and over again. And it's something that Jesus talked against and that Jesus understood in his life was not to be. If you read this, if you continue to read the gospel, you, you'll hear him breaking down the walls even between himself and the Gentiles and saying, well, maybe God is here for the Gentiles too. And for the non-Jews, that was a massive change in his life. It was a massive change that he made and he feeds them and he, and he, sits down at table with them. He sits down at the table with all sorts of people, sinners, which, he, which the Pharisees accuse him of eating with sinners. And he says, well, God wants to feed all of us. And so he sits with sinners and, and uh, wanton women are allowed into the room and he sits with cripples and all, all sorts of people. And so he, is, he, understood, he has understood that, that message of God, that, that God has created all of us and we're not to build walls between God's creation, but to understand it and to re respect it. I think that, that this call that we have to our faith is a call to, to listen to this message, to listen to this message, to, to overcome the barriers that are put up sometimes by authorities and by people in power who put it up for their own needs and for their own ends rather than oftentimes for the needs of the people. And so we, we listen to them, but we are the people who are, know what Jesus says. We try to live our lives in that way. We try to build relationships with others rather than destroy relationships. We try to, we try to lift people up rather than put them down. And this is the message we have that from, from Jesus and from the scriptures, the message of faith in him and that the message of living without those walls.